Okay, we are continuing with assignment one. So we can find that assignment one in two ways. Of course, everything is on our course outline. Always good to be re reminded this is what you are responsible for. It gives us all our deadlines, what we're doing. Today is September 18th. So today is when assignment one is due. We want to get it turned in and do a presentation critique for it. And we also want to introduce assignment two. So lots to do today. There's some helpful information optional reading on different ways to, to bring in pixel-based raster information like skinography, stuff like that, which could also be used in this project. And then digital honors, you're working on your, your digital coloring for your cast sheet once you have your vector line art done. So that's your assignment too. And you're trying to get your line art, your vector line art, you know, submitted by the end of today. So we're all working on assignment one. Where can we find it? This big banner here, unit modules, this gives us everything that we're working on in the class in order. So we're in unit four. You can also see it under modules on the sidebar here. So unit four. The only problem with these is there aren't dates. So you need to know what you're looking for. We're looking for assignment one. And we're gonna go right to the fantasy landscape assignment. So I call this 4D because it's unit 4 and it's A, B, C, D into it. What 4B was was our first question of the day and we're going to try to have a discussion on that to answer this question with more than 100 words. This is kind of our note taking for the semester. All right, what do we need to continue this? Well, we need our sketch. So we need to get that into the computer. Everything is going to be based on a sketch, whether it's a digital sketch, whether it's a traditional sketch. This was a blending of both. And then this is where I left off at the end of last class. So our videos took us up to this point. What is this point? This point builds up on the sketch and brings in different references and then rough cuts them out and starts to layer them. And then what I was just starting to do was to color correct them at the end of last class. I want to color correct them before I start cutting them out cleanly because the color correcting is going to make it a lot easier to cut them out. It will give me a lot of leeway. Where some people are stuck is how to get started. So they have their sketch. How do we start it? We don't just open up a Photoshop file, but I can open up Photoshop. And the reason we don't want to open up a Photoshop file is our sketch gives us our original composition. So the requirements of this project are to have an original composition sketch and then to finish it off with at least five sources, right? Even if it changes slightly from the sketch, like the bridge got a lot bigger in the final, the city moved back, but this sketch is what it's based on. Notice that the rectangle that the sketch is in is the roughly the rectangle that the final is in. This is what's called your aspect ratio. And that's why we can't just set it up as eight by 10. So I don't wanna just set it up eight by 10 by 350 because then if I bring the sketch into that, my sketch won't necessarily fit. You know, either way, if I did my landscape, the largest I can make my sketch on that eight by 10 is that my landscape file would be eight inches wide, but that means it would only be four inches tall, or more like six inches tall, which is not does not meet the minimum requirements, right? It needs to be at least eight by 10 by at least 300. If I do it with my portrait format, which is taller than it is wide, notice I didn't draw it exactly at eight by 10. I don't want us to be limited to only composing things at eight by 10. So that would be too narrow. So instead, we don't start something in Photoshop from scratch because we don't know what the, the aspect ratio is gonna be until we've brought in our sketch. Instead, we bring in our sketch. We open it with Photoshop. My gosh, I have four versions of Photoshop now. So Photoshop updated over the weekend. We can now run Photoshop 2024 if you like. The big difference between 2023 and 2024 is this tool 
which is the, the generative fill, the text-based AI fill, which is fun to play with, but we're not going to use it to learn the skills. We might use it to finish them off later. We'll see. I, I haven't decided if I want to show that to you yet or not. All right, so now I'm in the newest version of Photoshop. If you want to do that, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But what it does is it shows me all the defaults. So what we're in is what's called the Essentials Workspace. We want to keep that workspace. So if the tool is ever looking weird, you can always go to Workspace, Essentials, Default. And then if it ever looks weird, you can go Reset Essentials. And it will go back to this template. When it is in this template, though, we do want to turn on our rulers. And we do that by hitting Command-R. And then we do have to go to Photoshop and preferences, where did they move this? Settings, used to be preferences. And we have to change the units and rulers. So it's not pixel based, we want it based on inches. And that you only have to change that once in any new version of Photoshop. And now I'm gonna use the crop tool. And I'm gonna crop around the sketch I wanna use because I'm actually using this sketch and I've already done this in the videos. I'll do it on my vertical sketch. Let's say I was gonna set up my vertical landscape. Then it gives you this bar here, which is just a shortcut bar. I really hate it, so I hide it, because it really annoys me. All right, so now I hit return. I've cropped roughly to my sketch. Now I know the aspect ratio, the width to height ratio of my, of my landscape. Now I need to make it the right number of pixels so that it can print to the size I want. So I go to image and I go to image size. And I'm going to change it to at least 8 by 10 inches. So this is already larger than 8 by 10 inches, so I can keep that. But the resolution needs to change to at least 300. So I'm going to do 350. So that really in invents a whole lot of pixels. You can see that and how blurry these edges are. But this is just our, our template, our guideline. It means that our final project can print. Now I'm going to get off the crop tool and I'm going to use the move tool, click on the rulers and drag down to the sides of my sketch. This is what's called framing your image. So those guides can be turned on and off under view show guides, but the shortcut is command semicolon. So if the guides annoy you, you can turn them off, but you want them there with command semicolon. Next, now I have something that's a, almost 12 inches by 18 inches at 350 pixels per inch. That's enough pixel resolution. Really important you have that before you start bringing things in. Then you're going to go to image canvas size, and we're going to make extra space for you to work. This will get cropped later, and I like to make it 30 by 40 inches. This is like my desk space. Because I'm doing a vertical format, I made it 30 inches wide, 40 inches tall. Then you're able to bring in your references. And you're going to be learning quickly through these assignments that it's good to be organized, right? So I have my assignment one folder that lives inside my classroom folder. And inside my assignment one folder, I have my sketches, but I also have my references. And I have my references more than I need. I need five. And the ones for the vertical were these orange ones. So I can start bringing them in. Once they come in, I need to shrink them to about the size they would be on my sketch. And the, so our sketches are a template. Yes, my final image is going to crop to here. That's what's going to be the 11 by 18 inches by okay, 350. So think of this as, this is my drafting table at home. Right. This is my taped, finished collage. This is my plan for it. These are all the magazine pages I'm tearing out. Right. I'm going to cut out. And so I move them off to the edge just so I can see what I need still for the time being. Then I can rough cut it with my lasso. And then, because it's a smart object and I can't delete, I'm going to duplicate. Command J. Command J, it duplicates it onto a new layer, then I delete the smart object. Now I can bring in the next thing. 
So this is foreground. I'm going to move it down here. It's going to go right there. I might even have to grow this a little bit. And then I can loosely cut it out with my lasso. Command J. Delete the smart object. So I have that now, I have this. What things go in between? On and on, let's see, what was the big thing? So this is just what's called placing. And now we need to put everything in order, right? So what's my what's my furthest background one? Let's say this was my furthest background image. That's the one I just rasterize because I don't need to cut it out. That's what everything else goes on top of. Then I start placing these things in. If I want to use my sketch as a guide, now that everything's covered up, we use the trick we did for exercise two. And I take my sketch and I duplicate it. So I hit Command J and I move it up to the top of my layers. And then I take it down to 25% opacity. So it's just kind of floating above everything. Or even a little higher. So that's 40%. And then I'm going to lock it. It's important to lock it. You can still turn it on and off, but that means you won't accidentally select it when you're trying to move layers around. All right, so now the next step, I need to bring in at least five references. Right now I've only got three, but this isn't the project I've actually been working on. So I'll just show you quickly what's next. Once you've rough placed everything, so let's say that this was kind of what I wanted, um, then you can crop it back down to save memory closer to your framing. I wouldn't go all the way to your frame because you still might want some wiggle room. Now it's time for what, where we got with the uh, end of last class. So if I go to Canvas, you'll see where I got with five different elements. So background, actually I have more than five. I have a few different architectural elements. I have a couple foreground elements. I have foreground, middle ground, background. That's what I'm going for. And I can always find different ones and swap them out. The whole point is learning the process. The big difference here is you'll notice these edges are not super sharp because a good step before we color correct is to use a 100% eraser. So it's the first time we've used the eraser in the class. You'll see it about halfway down the toolbar. You're going to set the eraser to be large, like at least 100 pixels. There we go. I'm going to do more like 300 or 400 pixels. Well, no, about 300. And you want it to be a 0% hardness, so a large, soft eraser. And you want it to be at 100% opacity, so you'll see all the tool options at the top. And we'll get really used to these tools. And then you select the layer you want to start trimming, and I'm going to trim those hard edges just by erasing them. That's why we did a rough cutout with a lot of overlap. And already that will start to blend it in with the environment. Now before we do clean cutouts, I'm going to do some color correction. And that's where I left off in the last, in last class with the last videos. But you can see how just by erasing those edges and softening them, it's already blending them so much. And we haven't even done any kind of color correction yet. So this already starts to look like it's in the same universe as this. It just takes a little, a little more effort and tweaks. So the next step is color correcting. And this looks bright, this looks bright, this does not look bright. So this is the odd one out. If I want to make them look believable, I go to Image, Adjustments, and I play with Levels first. So we'll be doing this over and over again. I'm going to play with the mid-tone slider first, and then I can strengthen the shadows or strengthen the highlights. I just don't want to do the edges too much or I lose pixel definition. So this is called the histogram, and you're balancing the histogram to match the others. 
Next, I'm going to play with the color temperature, and that's adjustments color.